World War II, the American housewife was asked to participate and the question was rationing means a fair share for all of us. That's the, that was the question. And so to share what? To share vital goods. Vital goods, for example, they share food and they have to send food to England, Italy, France. And they have to share other vital goods, water and energy to win the war. So the question is, are we entering a war or not? And are we concerned with the coming collapse? If no, no problem. If yes, the question I will try to give you some uh, advice is on how finance can help to manage vital goods in the coming collapse. So the first meaning of collapse is uh, the society collapse. You, you can think of democracy, which is collapsing, but even the gap between the richest and the poorest is a, is a very high problem, even for climate problems, because the richest emits 2,000 times more than the poorest on Earth. So that can't continue. That is the society collapse. The second meaning of a collapse is the life on Earth collapse. And the first one who speak about this question uh, was uh, the group of the Club of Rome with Denis Meadows here. And they make uh, computation and simulations and to have a glance to where the world was going to. And they say the world first confronts the reality that resources limits constraints growth. That was a best seller at this period of time. And they say we will get problems with non-renewable resources and we'll get problems with global pollution. And usually economic models are always wrong. This one, they check it with a 20 years update book and the curves are exactly what happens. And it was a scenario which was called as business as usual. And why do we keep on this way? We keep on with this way because of liberal fundamentalist thinking of philosophers like Enron, of economists, uh, Milton Friedman, Alan Greenspan, or politicians, Reagan, Thatcher, and maybe today the European Commission. And what happens what happens here? Let's come back here. What is the problem? After the collapse, the population is going to decrease of a certain number of billion of people. And that, is, that could be called a crime against humanity. And are we entering it? Some say we are welcome to the Anthropocene. <coughs> and even the Nimidos, which work on this book, uh, in 1970, says it's too late for sustainable development. So, what we try to, to do for the climate, which is a collapse of both society and life, are collapsing together with the climate. Here is greenhouse gas emissions from the past, and here is what we decide at the COP21 agreement, Conference of Party. It's the Red Star. We decide in 2030 to go up here. And what we should do to be in line with what was presented as the two degree target, we should decrease by 5% every year. That's not at all the case. And it's probably out of control. So in a collapse, what is vital becomes scarce. And you can think of social vital goods, health, education, and the fact that everybody is going to participate to society. And this becomes scarce and collapse because of disorders of our inequal societies. In a collapse, what is vital becomes scarce too because of ecological vital goods. And we can think of species, food, air, water, energy. And the climate is at the earth 
because it can impact all those ecological vital food. And that becomes scarce because of ecological collapse. How it's, how it's managed today? Economy is managing the link between society vital goods and ecological vital goods. And the finance is managing over the whole economy. Is it good or not good? The question is, the collapse is certain for me. I don't know for you. So vital goods are becoming more and more scarce. scarce. And what finance do? It drives the management and the allocation of vital goods. But is it in the right way? No. Just have two examples. That is water. Water in the desert for golf. And money, money. Just invest and own a casino. That's a good future. And so, collapse is certain, but the question is how violence? And what I propose is an agenda for the seven years to come. And I propose two finance airbags, propose tools to preserve and manage our vital goods, and think and promote a finance without tax haven and corruption. So, on the first part, propose tools to preserve and manage vital goods. You can think of plenty of actions, all of these interrogative points. I'm going to focus on only one. The main important, I think, is food. And the question is to maintain two and a half billions, not millions, of small peasants around the world. If not, when they are bankrupt, they go to the slums and increase the number of people in big towns. And to protect them, finance can help. But in what way? What's the price to pay food? The price to pay food is very volatile and is profoundly linked to something strange. Corn is linked to the price of oil. And it becomes extremely volatile because when you are economists, they say it's the confrontation, the price of offer and demand. It's not at all the case. It's the gamblers who are making the price. And just like, have a look, every day, crude oil, 19 million barrels produced, and people in finance betting on 1,000 billion barrels, 20 times more. So we have to limit or forbid speculation on commodities, and especially on food commodities. And you know, you can, we can promote fair credit and fair trade for those peasants. The other way, to do another action, vital one, is to preserve and manage vital good is climate. And it's uh, 6,000 billion per year during 15 years. And so here you have a report presented uh, to our French president and the book to finance transition by Alain Grandjean and Mireille Martini. And they propose, among the two, a progressive carbon taxation up to 80 euro per ton. But the question is to promote ecological transition, the first part. But which ecological transition? We have tried plenty of things and nothing was okay because the target of two degree is really difficult to attain. If we want to attain the two degree target, we have to be in this line at minus 5% of emission and we have never been here only two times, the 1929 crisis and the World War II. So, technology without reduction of consumption has never worked. And let us try something else that could be decrease of consumption and better equality and low-tech technology for all. So there are some tools to do that. And for example, in finance, to help for climate, there, there are portfolio allocation strategy to invest in firms that could be in line with two degree. And for example, CarbonCat is a firm that proposes this. If you take all the, all the firms, you are going to reach a four degrees target. If you select and pick up your firms, you can go to a two degree target. What, you have to, what we have to do is to go to ecological pension funds that could help, and in this case, is the Norwegian government funds. And they, in 2006, they proposed to eliminate 49 firms 
that were in shale, oils and coal. The other thing we have spoken a lot here is about green quantitative easing and promote it through private bank or state-owned banks but to finance green energy, green transportation, green energy saving through or directly or through green bonds. It doesn't import. We have to oppose to privatization of vital goods. That's fundamental and ethical funds that do plenty of different business. Maybe they could agree together on a compulsory chart that could say, for example, the fund by vital goods for transforming them in common goods managed by communities on long term. And you have other specification, but I was told I have no time to keep on and explain you all that we can do in this chart. And now if we are going to have a glance to social vital goods, societal vital goods, the first target is to forbid tax avoidance. That's the main problem today for societies. No money for the states. And we have to keep on working together to do this. And we, we should blacklist banks and firms condemned for money laundering. That's not the case. Most of the time we invest in firms that they were blacklist, no blacklist, but they do plenty of money laundering. So how finance can help to manage vital goods in the common collapse? We can't reach the goal if we don't work together. So that's the concept of Ostrom, they say always work together and it's difficult because we have own interests, every of us. And we have to define a common agenda to create convivial tools in finance in the sense of even illich for convivial and to regulate with a consensus attitude. So that is to say not to be too integrist and to say, well, okay, choosing the set of rules so that most of us can say, I can live with. And we can reach the goal and smooth the collapse without embarking a maximum number of actors. That's the most important thing, the maximum number of actors. If we go back to two targets, or two targets, first target, manage vital goods, we have to think of a community of financial experts, and we have to join Finance Watch, AFEP, the Association for Another Economy, uh, Finance et Bien Commun, Finance and Sustainability, we have to make to work together. Civil society and ONG, you can think of plenty of them. It's why there are plenty of interrogative points. It's together what we can construct this. And state servants, and we have not to forget religion aspects. For example, Hindus. Hindus are very concerned with space size on Earth. And so we can address them, and they can help them, and they do plenty of things. So we have to address Muslims. Muslims are concerned with creation, with nature, protection of nature. So we have to work together for all those communities. And for example, I do something with stop, stop tax avoidance, and you can try and add new participants. And to summary, I think that the collapse is certain, but do we want to smooth it? It depends on you. Vital goods are surely becoming scarce, but do we want vital goods to be managed by local communities? And uh, in this picture you see water is not managed by local community. That's the sharing. And through finance and law, citizens have to, to my opinion, have to allocate vital goods to the management of communities. And second aspect, which is very important, boost the transition in order to preserve those vital goods of tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you.